I rise today to oppose the motion and in support of the amendments moved by our party. More important, I rise against the betrayal of the body polity that this government has been responsible for. And I sincerely hope that the Treasury benches will have the patience to hear me out, even if you lack that instinct for self-preservation that will actually make you listen. So if you have got express instructions today or the express intent today to shout me down, I say this to you, do so at your own peril because the people of India today are on the streets and their voices are beyond your powers to silence. As a member of the opposition, I have the unquestionable right to tell you that as a government, you lack humility. You secured approximately 37% of the 67% of votes cast out of a pool of 900 million voters. That's only about 230 million people. You got only 23 crores out of 1.3 billion citizens. So despite the fact that you might have had the largest majority in several decades, don't arrogate to yourself an extra constitutional authority over every citizen. Do not go beyond the tenets of democracy. Today I rise to speak of betrayal. And this betray betrayal is not just to myself. I was not part of the 31% who voted for you in 2014. I was not part of the 37% that voted for you in 2019. This is not about people like me. I was skeptical about you, your ideology, and your rhetoric right from the word go. In a sense, you owe me little. But the truth is, you have betrayed the very citizens who did vote for you. Mr. Maran, please. Mr. Maran, please. Mr. Maran. But the truth is, you've betrayed the very citizens who voted for you. You did not come to power on the vote of the Hindu right alone. You came to power because a very large section of ordinary people, the aspirational middle of the road voters, cast aside whatever reservations they might have had about your past and believed you when you said sabka saath, sabka vikas, which they took to mean development for a united India. They believed in your alternative narrative of merit, of transparency, of a world without nepotism and the entitlement of the Baba Log. It is to this section of people, these middle of the road voters that you owe your historic mandate to. These were not the hardcore believers, the Sanghis as it were, but they still believed you and they still voted for you. But you have betrayed the young voter who was eagerly looking forward to his first job. You have betrayed the small businessman by your foolish decision of demonetization, killing his market, ruining business for no fathomable reason. You have betrayed thousands of tribal people in Gujarat whose land you took to build a statue and who, to whom now you have given jobs as toilet cleaners. You have betrayed them by questioning the citizenship of the very citizens who voted you to power. And it is your middle of the road voters who today cannot recognize the India that uh, they are living in. They cannot recognize the images they see on their television screens. And they cannot identify with the hate-filled, venomous invective that they see members of the ruling party spew out publicly. A week ago, a meeting of Holocaust survivors was convened in Poland to commemorate the 75th liberation of the dreaded Auschwitz camp. Only 200 people are still surviving. And the one resounding message, perhaps the last in their lifetime, that they gave to the rest of the world was this. Auschwitz did not fall from the sky. Auschwitz happened because people were indifferent to the plight of others who professed a different faith from them. All Holocaust memorials today serve as one reminder. Not that it happened, but that it could happen again. We need to remember that it happened because not only of those who pressed the switch of the gas chamber, but also of those who sat back and watched when their neighbors were first marked out systematically and then dragged from their homes. The NPR, the NRC, and the CCAA are all tools in this Machiavellian design to first mark out, then disenfranchise, and finally annihilate. This is your biggest betrayal of those who voted for you. Nobody wanted to be part of this us versus them debate. My friends who voted for you in 2014 are horrified at what is happening in their name under your watch. As every election comes and goes, your members demonize dissent, exhorting your supporters to shoot people who stand up to you. 
Today, you have let a person who was banned by the election commission for speaking for 36 hours to come to the floor of the house and present the manifesto of the ruling party for the Delhi Assembly elections. You have the executive authority to do so, but your government, remember, depends on a higher authority, moral authority. You speak of Ram, you speak of Yudhishthir, you speak of Dharmaputras. What of Dharma? Have you forgotten that? You build false narratives where our dadis become your terrorists and our children become desh drohis. But today the citizen is finally standing up to these bullies and they echo Ram Prasad Bismil's words. These are not my words. Dekhna hai zor kitna bazu e katil mein hai. Sar jotha ek baar wo jhukte nahi lalkar se. Haat jotha wo katte nahi talwar se. You have betrayed your mandate. You have broken your promise to put the economy first and to put development first. My words will be incomplete if I don't highlight the abysmal state of the economy, of the arcane jugglery that this government practices, where the finance minister is fearful of putting out a real GDP target. The finance minister on the floor of the house says that nominal GDP target is 10%. In the month of December, the consumer price index was at 6.7%. Does that mean that real GDP today is 3.3%? That is what the government is saying. Remember, when there is no integrity in statistics, little else remains. Between 2011 and 2017-18, per capita consumption, according to the National Sample Survey, dropped in real terms. This is unprecedented in modern times, unprecedented. Moreover, all of that drop, according to the same data, happened after 2014. This data was first made public, but then as the bad news started to go around, the government suppressed the 1718 NSS survey, complaining that it was unreliable. There was no credible explanation given, though this very data had been used to tom tom poverty reduction in the past. There is perhaps even worse news. The GDP numbers are disputed partly because of disagreements about the right measure of inflation. A bigger problem may be that the method by which we compute GDP of the informal sector is crude and backward looking, so we overestimate GDP when the informal sector is shrinking. You have a tendency to rubbish every economic expert who doesn't agree with you. But your very own economic advisor, the chief economic advisor that you selected, has gone now on record to say that all the more reliable measures of macro statistics, growth and export, import and credit, investment, vehicle sales are mostly negative. More similar to a recession year like 1991 than the moderate growth year you say that we are having. Then there are unemployment numbers, high and growing, which the government denies. If we are really in a crisis, the government is doing this country a huge disservice by trying to suppress data and denying the correctness of the data that exists. You have betrayed the ideals of transparency and of better governance that you claimed you were wedded to. And your betrayal has gone much further than that. You have betrayed the history of this republic. You have denounced the very ideals on which we fought and gained our freedom which was through peaceful and non-violent dissent. You have tried time and again, time and again to rewrite the past and create a grotesque, singular version of India with a false history. But as Aga Shaheed Ali says, my memory comes in the way of your history. Three things, a majoritarian government, a subservient media, and a pliant judiciary. Anyone alone cannot destroy a nation as we know it. But a combination of all three can prove deadly. We are not Gaddars today because we point this out. We are Peheridars, guardians of our soil and our constitution.